how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. We're great. Okay, I think, does, okay. is my screen shared now? Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. Okay. yeah. Perfect. So she's gonna tell us all about marine mammals, wow. Ooh. All right, Finn, so I study marine mammals in California. So I'm right where the red dot is over here in the United States in Central California in a place called Monterey Bay. And one of the really cool things about Monterey is we actually have whales year round here. So whales migrate, most of them do, which means that they'll, they might spend their summer in one place and their winter somewhere else. But we get several different types of whales here in Monterey. So depending on what type of what time of year you're here, you get to see different types of whales. So the top picture is of gray whales, which we're just at the, about the end of our gray whale season here. They swim past Monterey while they're moving between the Arctic and Mexico. Cool. And we get a lot of humpback whales here in the summer. So they're starting to make their way back here. We see blue whales more in the late summer and fall. And we actually also get some orcas or killer whales, which they're actually a type of dolphin, but we see them throughout the year as well. And they're the ones that most of the research that I do or most of the studying that I do are based on the orcas. Wow. And so one of the things that we do when we're trying to study dolphins and whales is something called photo ID because we want to know which whale we're looking at and if that whale normally does a really cool behavior or if it's unusual to see that whale in an area. And so photo ID is when we take a picture of a dolphin or whale and it'll actually act like a fingerprint. So depending on where we take the picture, it'll be unique to that dolphin or whale and no other dolphin or whale will look like that. So for most whales, or for these are humpback whale pictures, we'll take pictures of their whale tail or their fluke. You can see how some of them have a lot more white, like this bottom left one has an almost all white fluke, and the picture above it has some black on the trailing edge. So we'll look at that to try to figure out which whale we're looking at. Did you know that, that whale tails are all different? No, he's shaking his head here. He's absolutely spellbound. <laughs> All right, so these are some pictures of whales that we've seen here in Monterey over the past six months. So there's three whales here. Do you think you can match the top row of pictures with the bottom ones? Oh, well, which one is this? A is matched with which one, do you think, Finn? Which one of those hmm. is the same? He thinks it's number one. I think it might be number two. Yep, so it's number two, so it has this little kind of white shadowing here. That one goes with number what two. B? What about B? B? Oh, he's pointed at three. I think he's right. Yes. Great job, which means which one does C go with? Number one, because that's kind of got spots, you see. I see he kind of couldn't see the right-hand side of the fluke, I'd say, because I have the little thing over it. Oh, let me see if I can make that smaller then. I know he's it's it's all good. <laughs> there we go. All right. So yeah, great job. So for most whales we use their flukes and this is a large part of what we do is we try to match them. And then for dolphins we use their dorsal fin or that triangular fin on their back and depending on how often we are out there, we can actually keep track of if a dolphin gets hurt and how it heals. So you can see this picture kind of in the middle row, the third one in, it yeah. has a little bit of an injury. It looks like it might've gotten tangled up in something or gotten bitten by something. And so if we're out there often enough and we get enough pictures, we can track how that heals. So we kind of get a good idea of what a dolphin goes through in its life. So when we're looking at these pictures, we want to look at if they have any cuts or notches, like the very top left one has a pretty deep notch. We also look at their bodies. So you can see some of them have these white swoosh marks, and those are from other dolphins raking their teeth against each other. 
And they do this when they're playing with each other as a way of being social. Oh. So these are some pictures of orcas that we have in the area. So they can be a little bit more tricky than matching the whale flukes. So you want to look at both their dorsal fins, see if there's any notches that are different and also the rest of their body. So this is called an eye patch, the white patch right by their eye. We'll look at that for orcas too. So do you think you can match this top row with the bottom ones? Well, I think this guy, number one, which one do you think is number one? It's climb away one. And it has a bit of a notch there in its dorsal fin. Can you see one that matches? It's that one. He reckons it's B. Yep, great job. So that one is actually Louise, one of the orcas that we see here fairly often. And in the bottom picture, B, she's with her calf, which we call little B. Oh, that's sweet. And number two, then look at that fin. Which one do you think that might match? He's pointing to C. Yep, great job. So that one is Emma, because if I think the notch kind of looks like an E. It does a bit, actually. Yep, so that's Emma, and she's the leader of the group. So she's actually Louise's mom, and she's one of the best hunters that we have in the area. Oh, cool. So then number three must be A fin, mustn't it? Yep, and that one is Liner, and he's Emma's brother, and we call him that because if you look at the eye patch, there's a little line going right through it. Oh. And so I have a video. Um, this one was taken a couple weeks ago of this is the whole pod hanging out in the area here. Oh, cool. Oh, wow, Finn, that's amazing, isn't it? So Emma, Louise, and Liner are kind of the more distinctive ones of the pod, but there's about six of them that we see pretty consistently here. Cool. And is it true that the males have a much straighter dorsal fin? That's kind of how you can yes, tell it. Yes, they do. They have a, you can look at their dorsal fin and males are much straighter. And you can also, if they give you a good enough look at their flukes, um, they'll curve in a little bit more. Is oh, okay. Yeah, you hit me straight out. Well, if you want to tell her something, go ahead. Uh, you know, uh, orcas are topless and prey, and they're monsters, and they're really big predators. They can and like slowly, Finn, because she won't be able to stay, keep up if you spoke, speak too fast. Well, uh, orcas can like they get size of the zoo boss. They can get nearly the size of a school bus. Okay. Wow. They're pretty big. And so some of the orcas that we get here, the males, their dorsal fin, so that fin on their back, can actually get up to six feet tall. Just the fin. Taller than me. Isn't it? So those were some of the orcas from the area. Orcas uh, are... They intelligent animals. They really are. Yeah, and so one of the other reasons we do this is it helps us figure out how many whales or dolphins that we have in the area. So think about it if you're trying to find one of your friends and you're in a room full of five people. It's probably going to be pretty easy to find that one friend. But yeah. then if you're in a room full of 50 people, it might be a little bit harder to find them. And if you're in a room full of 500 people, you're gonna see a lot, many different people before you actually find your friend. Yeah. And so we kind of do the same thing. We'll take a picture of the whale and then we'll look and we'll see how many other pictures of different whales we have to take before we find that whale again. And we're able to use that information to figure out how many whales are, how large our population size is here. That's really cool. Isn't that a really good way of working it out? Yeah. Now, so, I'm a thought, just give me one sec. I've got to go get Lena. She's awake. I'll be back in a sec. You can ask her a question there, Finn, if you like. Give me one sec. Do you have any questions so far, Finn? Uh, well, orcas or do you know why orcas hunt in packs? 
Well, a lot of time, it depends a little bit on the type of orca. So the ones that we see here, the animals that they prey on or that they're hunting for are a lot bigger than them. So they have to work together. And orcas also have a really strong sense of family. So they like to stay with their family throughout their whole lives and it's really important to them. Uh, so like, uh, orcas eat whales. Some of them do. Some orcas eat whales. Um, some eat fish. Others eat sharks. And so it really just depends on the type of orca that you're looking at because each have their favorite type of food and they really don't eat many other things other than their favorite type. That's cool, isn't it? Finn? Uh, so, like, oh. just one sec now. We let her get on with her presentation. We'll ask then again in a minute. So, one of the other things that I do is I study the sounds that they make. So, dolphins are kind of like bats, and that they use something called echolocation to help them almost see underwater. And so echolocation kind of works as if you're throwing a tennis ball against a wall. If you're really close to the wall, the ball will bounce back pretty quickly to you. But if you're really, really far away, it'll take a little while for the ball to come back. So that's kind of how echolocation works, depending on how close or how far away they are. They'll look, wait and listen and see how long it takes for the sound to bounce back to them. And so we put something called a hydrophone or an underwater microphone in the water. So that's a picture of one, the middle bottom picture. And we'll get all these sound recordings. And depending on what animal we're recording, what animals in the area, they actually make different sounds. And so one of the really cool things about certain types of dolphins is they have, they make this sound that we call signature whistles. And it's almost like a name for each dolphin. So each dolphin has their own name that's completely unique to that dolphin. And so if we hear them doing this signature whistle, we know that dolphins in the area, even if we can't always see them. Oh, well, that's cool. So when we're listening to sounds, with dolphins we can hear the sounds, but sometimes with other species they're either too high or too low and human ears can't hear the sound. So we'll look at pictures of the sound. So these are pictures of the sounds here. And so we're looking at where the red line is and that's the whistle. So there's a lot of other background noise but we're looking at the red line and I actually have these three whistles for you. Oh, listen. So this is the first one, the very top whistle. Oh man. It kind of sounds like a fire truck. A it does. does. So this middle whistle, do you see how, if you look at the picture we call these spectrograms it kind of goes up and down it looks almost like a camel's humps oh so i can't wait to hear this sound should repeat a little bit more That's the middle whistle, and this is the last whistle, so it should sound a little bit different from the first two. <laughs> it's very, very different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So they kind of sound a little bit funny, but so most dolphins whistle, they'll also click, which is the more echolocation side of it, whereas whistling is a little bit more them being social and talking to each other. And dolphins actually have really long memories. So they'll remember these whistles for at least 25 years. So they'll remember their friends for at least that long. We don't have any recordings or we haven't done any studies for longer than that.
but we had one where the dolphins were separated for 25 years and they still remembered each other. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yes. This is a picture of a sperm whale. And so instead of making whistle sounds, they make clicking sounds. And one of the really cool things about sperm whales is each family of sperm whales has their own pattern of clicks. So just by listening to them, we can tell which family a whale belongs to. He really wants to tell you something about a sperm whale, I think. Well, yeah. sperm whales are the biggest two predators that ever lived. Uh, females are smaller than the males. The females are over 12 meters and the birds are like way longer than 17 meters. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. that's really impressive that you know that. Finn is a big time, uh, what would you say, a budding marine biologist, I think. He's a massive collection of facts built up already. I love to hear that. Have you ever heard of a researcher called Shane Giro? No. So he studies sperm whales. He does a lot of really cool things with sperm whales. And he has some really interesting videos if you want to look him up after. Talking oh, all about idea. how different families have different clicks. So this is a video of sperm whale clicks. I can get it to play. There. Okay, there we go. So if you look at the bottom row where it's black and kind of a purple pink, where there's more purple and pinks, that's where there should be more clicks. Okay. Wow. That's pretty cool. So sperm whales make clicking sounds. And then we also have humpback whales and they sing songs. So yeah, we each population of humpback whales has a different song and they also will learn a new song every year. And when they're learning songs, they actually learn them pretty similarly to how we learn songs. They'll hear another whale singing a song, just like you might hear a friend singing a song or hear a song on the radio. And they'll learn the part that repeats the most or is easiest for them to remember first, like the chorus. And then they'll add in other parts as they sing the song over and over and over again until they have the full song memorized. That's cool. This is a recording from a humpback whale singing here in Monterey. And there's an aquarium here called the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And they have a hydrophone or an underwater microphone that sits in the middle of the bay and just is continuously recording all the sounds that are out there. And you can actually Google it and listen to all the sounds in the bay at, from your computer. So they oh, cool. broadcast Definitely. it for everybody to listen to. So what did you want to say? Uh. I watch Blue Planet. Yeah. Know lots about animals. Yeah. Yeah, Blue Planet. Now, are we going to listen to the humpback whale song? Mm -hmm. This is a humpback whale singing. What does it sound like? Good. I don't know what it sounds like. If you look at the video 
and you can see where the color gets brighter, so where you have the yellows and reds and pinks, that's where you hear the whale song and all the blues is kind of just the background noise here in the bay. Oh wow, look, mm. he's gonna make all the noise here. whistling in the background so some dolphins are now in the area too oh yeah you can actually cool isn't it that was an amazing song okay one of the really cool things that we're starting to get to do now is we're able to put together video as well as the sound recording so we can actually see what dolphins and whales are doing at the same time as we're listening to them. So this is a video from about a month ago here in Monterey of gray whales and they're called Pacific white-sided dolphins together. Oh, cool. <laughs> So we put a drone up in the air so that we can look straight down into the water. And see there's a gray whale and a calf, so a baby gray whale, and all these dolphins. And the dolphins like to swim right by the front or the snout of the whale. They can almost surf in the pressure wave that the whale makes. And so they're kind of up by the front of the whale and they'll whistle and click and buzz at it. Can I keep up with their mom? Yeah, they stay real close to their moms, don't they? Yes, they do. They like to rub up against each other. Do you so have a question because, like, orcas eat baby gray whales? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's one of the things we study here. So, this is your, an underwater view of the dolphins. <laughs> Can you hear them? Yeah. Huh. Now we're able to learn all the new stuff and get all these different viewpoints of dogs and whales. All right, so do you have any questions now for me? Uh, well. I do know gray whales are very big animals. They are, yes. And they mind their cats. Do you have any questions or anything you don't know that you'd like to find out? Think about it. Hmm. It's a tricky one to come up with a question, is it? Life. I do, yeah, you do. He's thinking on it here. Um, I think he he uh, he's just kind of a bit blown away, really, by all the videos and the sounds and everything, which is kind of cool. What did you want to say? Don't have any questions. You don't have any questions. Okay. Okay. Lot, Finn. Pardon? Did you learn a lot, Finn? Did you learn yeah. a lot? You did, yeah, absolutely. Good, I'm glad. Did you enjoy it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. That was really, really good. I loved your presentation, Megan. Yeah. And it was really, like, really kid-friendly. I was kind of afraid it might go kind of over his head, but it was super. Good, I'm glad he enjoyed it. And I'm glad you learned something, Finn, too. It seems like you know a lot about dolphins and whales, so I'm glad I could maybe give you some new facts as well. Yes, absolutely, you did. And another thing, Finn, stop missing. 
Um, yeah, no, he loves ocean life. He, it started with sharks, actually. So um, it's nice that he's kind of branching out now because we were obsessed with sharks for about six months. <laughs> That's okay, awesome. Finn, what do you say to Megan for all her lovely Thanks. facts? Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna turn her video back on because Lena wants to see herself, I think. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Megan. That was amazing. That was awesome. Of course. <laughs> I'm going to no. start recording now. So. Thanks a million, guys. It was okay. lovely to meet you. You too. Lovely to meet you. And thanks so much for setting it up. No problem. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs>